Finally, I get to play as an average pesky Baltimore citizen and pull a bunch of funny pranks on my neighbors in the highly awaited title called Hatred. Being the insufferably poor neat I am, I borrowed hatred from one of my favorite friend as soon as I was able to. Because like everyone else, I was excited to actually get my hands on and play Hatred. And I know what you're thinking. Will Hatred turn me into a serial killer? Is Hatred guy actually Tommy Wiseau in disguise? Does Mario have mustache-shaped pubic hair? While all of these are extremely relevant questions, none are as important as the next one. Does Hatred even live up to the insane amount of controversy surrounding it? No. It doesn't. It's just another game that happens to have gratuitous, senseless violence. Does all that violence dehumanize me into a psychopath? No. I could watch the news for that. Do I feel deeply connected to the emotional plights of Hatred Guy's Shakespearean inner monologue? If I was 13 years old and listened to Linkin Park and My Chemical Romance DBZ AMVs, then maybe. Does it make me want to go Sandy Hook style in some random Canadian elementary school? No. But this man might. Is Hatred the most gory video game ever to grace the human race? No. I actually think Killing Floor 2 takes the cake there. I mean, dude, look at that. That's fucking awesome. The game itself, it's fine. It's a fun game. You shoot people, stab them, kick them, burn them. Sometimes they shoot back at you. In the later levels, you can't walk five steps without getting shot at. So it isn't just a massive normie genocide simulator. It will occasionally kick your ass. And that's a good thing, because that's about the best thing this game's got running for it besides the crazy physics system, which allows you to blow up literally any wall or obstacle in the entire game. If you think Battlefield has good destruction, this game takes it to a whole other level. You just have to deal with the occasional FPS drops, when said walls eventually come crumbling down from excessive gunfire and explosions. After that initial 10 second shock reaction of, Oh, here I go! Bang bang bang! I'm stabbing you now! Look how violent this game is! It just... fades away. You stop thinking about how violent the game is, and you start enjoying its twin-stick structured mayhem. Oh, and I didn't really like the gamepad controls. They just didn't feel right or even that good to me. And even the PC controls felt a little clunky at times. I often found myself either not being able to find my crosshair or getting stuck on things in the environment. I wish I had checked my settings more before I played though, because there's actually an option to change your crosshair color and shape in the options. That may have remedied a lot of the problems I had while playing, but it wouldn't have stopped the camera from being awkwardly placed and blocking my view the few times it did. Oh, and speaking of problems, surprisingly, I only encountered a single glitch while playing. That's like, a record for me. The game took me about four hours to beat, mostly because it's so damn hard in later sections. Maybe I just stink at it, but I was tempted to turn down the difficulty just so I could finish it. I'm glad I didn't because the later sections of this game were my favorite parts due to this difficulty curve, which seemed to slightly fall off towards the climax of the game. And man oh man, <laughs> this dialogue. This is beautiful! I mean, no one told me Hatred was gonna be a black comedy. This shit's hilarious! Let me introduce myself. I'm a man of hate and disgust. <laughs> this guy should give up the whole Adam Lanza gig and become a comedian. Shit's priceless. In conclusion, I think Hatred is a fun, well-designed game. While its gameplay can get boring and repetitive at times, it makes up for it by being genuinely challenging and far more enjoyable in the later half of the game. It's simply entertaining and unadulterated. 